Hello everybody and welcome back to our lesson. In this video we will create the class of weld and a few help methods to handle with weld class objects. Let's create a new item of CS code and name it weld key. This we don't need for now. I will delete it. First, we'll create a structure to represent ports of our weld. So public struct, struct port. Now, let's add the properties of our ports. Public string, od, get set. Public string, wall thickness, get set. Wow. Sorry. String, not int. Okay. Wall thickness, get set. Then, the spec. Here we will store the pipe spec of connected part. So, public string, spec, get set. Then, let's have a property where we will store the long description size of connected part. Let's name it LDS. Very well. Now, let's make a constructor of our struct. All right. Public struct port. String OD. String wall thickness. String spec. String LDS. You know, we forgot about material property. Well, public string material, get set. And also, into constructor, string material. Very well. Now let's assign the properties with constructor parameters. Visual Studio helps us with this. I like it when it works properly. Okay. Now let's create a class, weld, and let's add some properties of our class. Public string, weld number, get set. Public int, weld ID, get set. Here we will store the ID of our entity from plant 3D database. Public string, weld type. Here, we will store information about the type of weld, whether it is a boat weld, tap weld, or socket weld. And finally, let's add the port objects, port 1 and port 2. These objects will store the port properties inside their respective structures. This way, we can easily access any property of each port. And now, let's create a constructor for our class as well. Wow! Again, Visual Studio is suggesting the constructor code, and it looks like we can accept it. Very well. I'm happy with this. All right, let's create a few help methods to manage our class. We might encounter situations where two welds have the same properties, but their ports are reversed. If we don't address this, these wells will end up with different numbers, even though they're essentially the same. To solve this, we need to ensure that the order of the ports is consistent. The idea is simple. We compare the ports based on their outer diameter first. If the diameters are the same, 
we compare their wall thickness. Finally, if both are still the same, we compare the material. The larger port, based on this comparison, will always come first. For this reason, we create a method and name it compare ports. We will compare the strings, and if the first string is larger, we will return a positive value. If it is smaller, we will return a negative value. Based on this, we can normalize the ports. All right, firstly, we compare the out diameters. If the comparison result is non-zero, we will return it immediately without comparing other properties. If the outer diameters are equal, we will proceed to compare the remaining properties. The second step is to compare the wall thickness. The process is the same as for the outer diameter. We use the compare method of the string class, and if the result is non-zero, we return it immediately. If not, we continue with the next comparison. Visual Studio helps us again. Many thanks. Actually, I don't think we need these curly brackets. It's going to work without them as well. And finally, we return the result of the material comparison. This completes the comparison process for the ports. Once the material comparison is done, the method is ready to be used. Once we've compared the ports, we need to ensure their order matches our requirements. If the ports are not in the right order, we'll simply swap them. Let's first create a method to normalize the ports. Normalization ensures that the larger port, based on our comparison, is always the first one. So, if compare ports port 1, port 2, returns a value less than 0, it means that the properties of port 1 are considered smaller than those of port 2. In this case, we need to swap the two ports to ensure they are in the correct order. We do this by calling the swap ports method, which exchanges the values of port 1 and port 2. This step guarantees that we are always working with the ports in the correct sequence, making the subsequent operations more straightforward and ensuring the integrity of our logic. In swap ports method, we simply swap the ports using tuple assignment. This operator works well because it allows us to exchange the ports without explicitly creating a temporary variable. The last method for today is to collect and assign the properties of each port to the weld object. When calling this method, we will pass parameters. Integer port index. String out diameter. String wall thickness. String material. String spec and string long description size. Essentially, all the properties we defined for the port earlier. Depending on the port index, we will assign these properties either to port 1 or port 2 in the weld object. So the first condition will be if port index equals 1, we will assign all values to the port 1 properties. First, we need to create an object of port struct. So port 1 equals new struct port, with properties of out diameter, wall thickness, material, spec, and LDS. Else, if the number port equals 2, then we make the same, but only create port 2 object instead of port 1. So port 2 equals new struct port, with properties of out diameter, wall thickness, material, spec, and LDS.
Occasionally, for an unknown reason, we might receive a port number that is neither one nor two as a parameter. While it's unclear how this could happen, but if it does, we will handle it by throwing an argument exception with the message, port index must be one or two. Good. On this note, we'll wrap up this video. Thank you very much for your attention, and we'll continue in the next one.